Good morning, folks. This is Deb Delapiana, and this is your Chain Reaction Report. Um, we're going to talk about a few things today. And it's particularly timely because I, I just spent some time in the Defend Roe v. Wade group removing uh, right-wingers who have temporarily disguised themselves to get in there and make comments. It's really a tremendous waste of your fucking time. First of all, because I will find you, I will remove all of your content, I will block you from the group, and I will block all of your future profiles. Um, you are not welcome in that group. Nobody who professes a affinity for the GOP or for Donald Trump is welcome in any of our groups but particularly in the Roe v. Wade group. This includes someone called Lisa Lala. You know, these people are such fucking cowards, they don't even use their real name. Um, so Lisa's comment was, the violence comes from the left, not the right. So I'm, I'm going to spend some time dispelling the myth. You know, let's, let's take... January 6, 2021, and just set that aside, okay? Let's, let's set that aside, Lisa, because guess what? Those were all right-wingers. Antifa was not in the Capitol building, and neither was Black Lives Matter. That was all on you. It was all the Proud Boys, the Oath Keepers, and the mis-fucking-begotten lunatics who follow and profess a loyalty to them. Those were the people who committed the violence on January 6th, resulting in, may I add, five deaths, including your heroine, whatever the fuck her name was, because I don't really even care, okay? She was not a hero. She was a traitor and an insurrectionist. Let's set that aside, though. This was... This was... Uh, Yesterday's headline. Gunman kills 10 in Buffalo supermarket in racially motivated hate crime. This was a, an 18-year-old racist named Peyton Gendron who has been charged with first-degree murder after targeting black shoppers in a hate crime. Period. End of story. Okay? So... He fired approximately 60 shots from a military-grade weapon. We're going to dispel several myths today, okay? Gendron was wearing military-style clothing, body armor, and a helmet, and was armed with a high-powered rifle. He had apparently traveled more than 200 miles to attack the supermarket, located in a predominantly black neighborhood. 11 out of 13 people shot were black. The other two were white, and I'm sure they were just collateral damage that he didn't mean to hit. But you know what? Racists and bigots and far-right activists don't really give a shit about the collateral damage. It's not just the government that doesn't care about that in wartime. It is the right wing at all times. The shooter was clearly not from that community. So this guy put himself a little manifesto online, which, you know, we haven't seen. Uh, because it's probably part of the investigation. Usually they have a link, but they don't right now. Um, he talks about uh, becoming radicalized from listening to other people and reading, of course, here we go, a 4chan forum. I was not born racist nor grew up to be racist. I simply became racist after I learned the truth. And the truth is, for people on the right, that everybody is evil except the white man, and particularly black people and immigrants. The document touts earlier racist rampage killings and pushes the conspiracy theory that white people are facing extinction and are being, quote, replaced by immigrants and people of color, the great replacement theory. It's a baseless notion 
that has been widely promoted on the far right fringes from the neo Nazi marches of Charlottesville, yes, indeedy, to the Fox News broadcasts of Tucker Carlson. He even invokes Tucker Carlson as his inspiration. So, right off the top, Lisa Lala, no, it isn't the left. If you want to go back, I don't know, 50 years, 50 years, yes. There was left-wing violence. You know, the weathermen, uh, students for a democratic society, you know, there were bombings. These people were not part and parcel of our government. The Democratic Party at the time did not condone that. The Democratic Party didn't put a bunch of bombing uh, radicals into government. But right now, the GOP is indeed fielding white supremacists without nary a pushback from our grand and glorious uh, Kevin McCarthy or anyone else who's in a leadership role. No pushback whatsoever. Donald Trump, a veritable criminal, is running the party, a man who is collecting money from the public without even declaring as a candidate yet. Breaking FEC rules day in and day out. And nary a pushback from any of the anti from from any of the leadership on anti-Semitic comments, violent comments, or anything else. So please shut the fuck up, Lisa. You're a flat-out fucking liar. I'm not done yet. Right after I read that headline, I come to this. Right-wing broadcaster calls for governors to execute abortion providers and to bulldoze Planned Parenthood. Yeah, right. The right isn't violent, though. No siree. They're peace-loving patriots. They are just misunderstood, misrepresented, mischaracterized. And, of course, everybody who participated in January 6, 2021 is a political prisoner. Shut the fuck up. I'm so tired of the right wing. I am so sick of the GOP. It's not even funny. If you aren't galvanized by now to get rid of these shit bags, then there's something clearly wrong with you. So let's talk about abortion clinic violence now. Let's talk about this. I'm going to read some of these to you. I'm going to put this in. These are the murders that have happened across the United States. March 10th, 1993. Gynecologist David Gunn, Pensacola, Florida, fatally shot during a protest. He had been the subject of wanted posters distributed by Operation Rescue in the summer of 1992. Michael F. Griffin was found guilty of Gunn's murder and was sentenced to life in prison. July 29th, 1994, John Britton, a physician, and James Barrett, a clinic escort, were both shot to death outside another facility, the Lady Center in Pensacola. Florida is a hotbed of just charming people, isn't it? Yeah. Paul Jennings Hill was charged with the killings. He received a death sentence and was executed on September 3rd, 2003. The clinic in Pensacola had been bombed before 19. 19- 84, and was also bombed subsequently in 2012. Yes, of course, the right is never violent. No, no. December 30th, 1994, two receptionists, Shannon Lowney and Leanne Nichols, were killed in two clinic attacks in Brookline, Massachusetts, my fair city. Charming. John Salvi was arrested and confessed to the killings. He died in prison. They found his body under his bed with a plastic garbage bag tied around his head. Perfect. It's perfect for him. He had also confessed to a non-lethal attack in Norfolk, Virginia, days before the Brookline killings. January 29th, 1998, Robert Sanderson, an off-duty police officer who worked as a security guard at an abortion clinic in Birmingham, Alabama, was killed when his workplace was bombed. Eric Rudolph admitted responsibility. He was also charged with three Atlanta bombings. The 1997 bombing of an abortion center the 1996 Centennial Olympic Park bombing, and another of a lesbian nightclub. He was found guilty of the crimes and received two life sentences as a result. October 23, 1998, Barnett Stepien was shot to death with a high-powered rifle 
at his home in Amherst, New York. He was the last in a series of similar shootings against providers in Canada and northern New York State, which were all likely committed by James Cop. He was convicted of Stepien's murder after being apprehended in France in 2001. May 31st, 2009. George Tiller was shot and killed by Scott Roder as Tiller served as an usher at a church in Wichita, Kansas. This was not Tiller's first time being a victim to anti-abortion violence. Tiller was shot once before in 1993 by Shelley Shannon, who was sentenced to 10 years in prison for the shootings. November 27, 2015, a shooting at a Planned Parenthood clinic in Colorado Springs, Colorado, left three dead and several injured, and a suspect, Robert L. Deere, was apprehended. The suspect had previously acted against other clinics and referred to himself as a warrior for the babies at his hearing. You know, please remind me again, what side of the political spectrum is violent? Here's some attempted murders, assault, and kidnappings. We got plenty of them. Arson, bombing, and property crime. Right here, they should have probably called maybe Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh, he wasn't around then. Yeah, another thug and another terrorist. These are acts of outright terrorism. This isn't exercising your First Amendment rights. You are murdering people because you're supposedly pro-fucking life. There's an entire list here. August 1982, three men as identifying as, identifying as the Army of God kidnapped Hector Zavalos, a doctor and clinic owner, and his wife, Rosalie Jean, by, and, and held them for eight days. December 18, 1996, Calvin Jackson, a medical doctor of New Orleans, Louisiana, was stabbed 15 times, losing four pints of blood. Donald Cooper was charged with second-degree attempted murder and was sentenced to 20 years. Donald Cooper's Day of Violence is an article that you can read. You can read about all of this. This is all part of real American anti-abortion violence history. And this is all perpetrated by the right wing. So people really spare me all of this nonsense about how the people marching on the homes of Amy, Amy Coney Barrett and John Roberts should be arrested. For fucking what? For what? They are exercising their First Amendment rights, as we will be today on the streets of Boston at 2 o'clock. I'm really sick and tired of the right-wing bullshit. And the reason you people fall for this crap is because they just come on here and repeat the lies over and over and over again. And you never bother to check whether they're actually telling you the truth. Because why? Because we have become a nation of non-thinkers. Get a clue, people. The violence in this country right now, all of it, is being perpetrated by the right. And you can see all about that on our website at www.factivistproject.org. I'll talk to you all later. By the way, I didn't actually forget this. I just kind of thought about this as I was ending the video. So I'd like to just add something here. There's a couple of other things we need to talk about. Actually, I actually think the left wing is way too nice uh, in general, uh, way too accepting and way too tolerant of the right wing. By the way, I hate the word tolerant. Uh, we'll talk about that terminology some other times. You know, like I tolerate you or, you know, when they show gay people and say tolerance. You know, we really need to push that button and move that from tolerance to accept because you know what? Uh, tolerance is uh, kind of insinuating that we're putting up with you. And that's really not the way we should be talking about this, okay? Right now, I'm tolerating the right for just as long as I can to vote them out. But one other thing, 
John Roberts, in his oh-so-eloquent leaked Roe v. Wade assessment, you know, said there's no definitive basis for abortion in the Constitution. Let me, let me say this. There's no legitimate basis for Americans to own AR-15s, AK-47s, or other military-style assault weapons. None whatsoever. So it is time now to take the GOP out of power, eliminate the filibuster, and ban automatic weapons. Period. End of story. The automatic weapons ban that was in place was actually put in place under George H.W. Bush, a Republican. It was his son, W., that allowed it to expire under pressure from the NRA and under the donation barrage from the NRA. So let's get fucking real here, okay? Let's get fucking real here. It is time to take these weapons off the streets. End of story. This is nobody's right to do what is being done here. We are a country obsessed with solving our problems with guns, and it's time for that shit to stop too. I'll talk to you later.